Please don't be any bills. Wait a minute. Hey, there's your family. You gotta see this. Come along with me. Fishing family. It came today. I'm excited. I gotta show you something. How many of you know what these three letters are? I know you do. Do-it-yourself projects. When it comes to most do-it-yourself projects, as long as you've got an angle grinder, a table saw, 19 putty knives, four different types of drill bit sizes, a screw set, and maybe a used vacuum cleaner hose, you've got mostly what you need to do a lot of jobs. But is it always feasible when it comes to trying to save money? So when it comes to DIY projects related specifically to fishing, there's several different categories that you've got there that you can utilize. There's soft plastics, there's tying of flies, there's hard plastics, there's lead that you can use to pour for weights. You can also use that lead for pouring jig heads. I'm going to really focus on probably the three. I don't want to touch anything with the lead. I don't want cancers. I don't want to mess with that stuff. Um, I would say that the soft plastics is probably the most cost prohibitive as far as the expense goes. It's got so much upfront cost that you've got to put in as far as your molds, your plastic, your glitter, your, your color, your microwave to be able to heat your soft plastics up. I would look at it kind of like a Costco membership. You know, I've got to pay for that membership and I got to buy five gallons of mayonnaise. I don't need five gallons of mayonnaise. I don't want it. It's kind of the same way you're gonna do this. You're probably gonna have, I would guess, just even have one mold and have all your setup, five, six hundred dollars. Uh, that'll get you a lot of soft plastics, uh, unless it's just something you really want to uh, explore and maybe even sell, possibly. Um, but just for DIY and saving yourself money, to me that seems to be the most cost prohibitive one there. Uh, tying of flies. Once again, there's a lot of materials that go into it, your feathers, your string, your hooks. Uh, I know it's probably a fun to, chore to do to make up your exact flies per seasons. When it comes to that as well, I don't think you're just tying up one fly. I think you're going to want to have several materials to be able to tie up according to the different hatches and things that you're fishing for. So my focus uh, would be on the hard plastics. Your Whopper ploppers, which are really big right now, your spooks, uh, your uh, ploppers, any of those, uh, your crankbaits, that market seems to be the less introduction to, as far as expense goes. You can pretty much get your few raw materials, your, your blank uh, hard plastics, your split rings, and your treble hooks that you're going to be using. And outside of that, all you really need is a set of pliers to split and set your split rings on your hard plastic. Uh, and then if you want to take it, the next step would be your painting, whether you're going to get an airbrush kit or uh, you're going to just paint them with some type of uh, paintbrush and, and kind of like model car paint. Uh, I guess you can kind of explore that. But so I went online this afternoon and just did a couple quick searches. And here was just some of the ideas so that I can really get an idea, are we really saving money when we do this? So uh, let's take the, the hot item right now, your Whopper Ploppers. Those do get pricey, so we're running anywhere between 10 and $15 easily per lure. And I've seen some that even go even upwards of 25 bucks. So that's pretty pricey. Uh, so another one I looked up was the uh, Hedden Super Spook Junior. That runs about $7.99. Uh, a, a Rebel Cricket Hopper Popper uh, runs about $5.99. So in this pack that I got, uh, I started out, I'll show you real quick what I've got.
pretty small kits. So this one that I got, this kit, let me look it up real quick again. It was between these two packs that I've got here. Today's order cost me $43.88. When I'm done with putting all these together, that'll be 24 crankbaits in total, uh, which is an average of $3.65 per crankbait. Uh, there are 150 hooks, 150 eyes, and 150 split rings in these. So that'll leave me 102 of those individual items left over for other baits. But th so 365 ends up being pretty pricey when it comes to this. So if, if your goal is saving money, I don't feel like I've really saved money going this route. But I think there are some of the specific baits that you are going to save more money on. So let's take this, for instance, the Rebel Cricket Hopper Popper, $5.99 per Cricket. So I end up finding uh, and they're coming this week. I got 30 hoppers for the price of $12.98. Or that works out to 43 cents per crankbait that I've got. And then I've got the 102 hooks and eyes and rings left over from this that will cover me on those. So I think you'll save money on that. So uh, I guess the next cost is if you're wanting to get into painting them. I am going to do some more videos. I'm going to try something. I've got some ideas I think you guys would be interested in, and I'm really curious about it, uh, but I'll get into that a little bit later. But let's say if you want to take this to the next level and you, you want to go beyond just something like in a spray can or something you're trying to spray paint or hand paint these, um, you're going to need pretty much a couple other items. You're going to need a, some holding stands these are pretty inexpensive you can get a single holding stand that's got two arms in it for about 1070 and then i looked up airbrush kits the airbrush kits the cheapest one that i found was 59.96 on amazon that had a real small compressor and i doubt that it's going to have any longevity as far as as small as it is if you're going to be using this full time if you're just using it to pop out a couple baits i don't think it'll be bad outside of that i found another kit on there that uh, included everything. It had your compressor, your hoses, your airbrush, and it came with six primary colors, um, and that ran about $149.96. So uh, the paints get expensive too. If you wanna get into, and I would wanna go this route, I would wanna have the pearl colors, the iridescence, and just your other primary colors so that you can do a number of different effects when you're painting these if you want to go that route. I'm also going to try uh, some of these as ghost baits, especially my top waters. My whopper plopper, I think the noise in itself is probably what's attracting the fish, so I want to see how that works. Um, but so up front, realistically, I mean, you can look so pair of pliers, holding stands, airbrush kits, you'll have probably 250 bucks in this so depending on how many of these hard plastics you want to have in your fishing arsenal really determines once again how much you want to go into this and does it really save you the money if you're not losing a lot of baits um, and there's just one specific color you want you may want to use i've got one other thing coming in this week that i wanted to check outside of these kits and I ordered it, and it was a hard plastic kit. I'll show the picture here. There's 56 lures in this. So I'm not big on the colors. They are already painted. They already come with your split rings, and they already come with your treble hooks. What I envisioned is this. I only paid $38.99 for this set. So that works out to $0.69 cents per bait in this set. I thought about if I went that route, that would be cheaper than going this route and having to assemble all the stuff together. And then I could change up the paint colors if I wanted. Cause some of the colors are already pretty close to some of the stuff I like, but the really wild mess, the purples and pinks and all that, I would probably come back with an airbrush with just a couple of primary colors, maybe some translucents and some pearls, black, silver, white, go more natural colors, maybe some browns for some crawls or something and go that route so then i would only have 69 cents 
per bait invested. And then if I, like I said, wanted to invest in the airbrush, I think that would be a cheaper route. Then I don't have to go out and buy the individual split rings and the hooks and take the time to do it. Because when it comes to DIY projects, a lot of people don't look at their own time as the expense too. I mean, I look at what I make hourly and then factor that in. A lot of people won't do that. And for this scenario, I'm not doing that. I'm just looking at your time as being free and what do the raw materials cost you uh, and does it save you in the long run? I think what I'm gonna find out is there's gonna be certain ones on here that really are gonna save you a lot, especially the Whopper Plopper. So that's another one that I ordered this week. Um, it'll be coming in later on. I got five Whopper Ploppers blanks, so they're just clear, for $13.98. So that works out to $2.79 a piece. Uh, and then also the hooks that I have left over from this kit will also do the uh, uh, the grasshoppers and the um, whopper ploppers. Well, Fish and Family, I'll go into uh, more detail on some more videos. I just wanted to do an intro on this. Uh, this is kind of where I'm starting to do my exploration on it to see really can I save money on this? That's where I kind of thought at first. Me and my brother were talking about for Christmas, he had gotten uh, me a whopper plopper and spent about 10 bucks on it and was wanting to get some himself, but he was kind of saying how you know expensive they are. He's worried about losing them. And uh, that's where I started exploring. I saw some of these blanks and kind of was putting two and two together. Would it be a cheaper alternative? Now, I'm not knocking whopper plopper. Uh, they're the original. They got a great design, but for some of us that's trying to save money, uh, maybe that's the only alternative you can do. And if you want to fish that type of bait, maybe this is an alternative to try. Uh, but I do want to make sure that it, it it does save you money. A lot of times you go into some of these DIY projects thinking you're going to save money. And by the time you get your tools and your time and your finished product, you end up with a great product, but you end up spending more than what you just could have purchased it outright. I'm curious to see if that's going to be with this. From some of my numbers that I've looked at, like I said, I think uh, if you're looking at bulk, you're going to save money, of course, in bulk. That's the only way you're going to be able to spread out the expense if you end up going the full-on airbrush and the holders and, and just all that part of it. That's going to be your biggest expense when it comes to the hard plastics plus your time. Uh, will it save you money there? If you're just looking for a, a couple lures that you want to throw in your arsenal, it might just be cheaper to search around on Amazon and maybe find some knockoff versions. Uh, or if you want to go with the uh, original versions, uh, it still may be cheaper to go that route versus putting the time and money and, and expense that it's going to take to get the tools set up to do this. But I'm going to dig in some more in there. Like I said, I've got another couple cool ideas I think you're really going to like that I'm going to do some testing on that I'm going to bring in on some later videos. But hey, until next time, Fisher family, grab your poles, call up your buddies, get to make some memories. I'm Jimmy Zamelbo. I love you guys. Hey, thanks so much. And we'll see you real soon.